This is a Stipple Wild video. So if you don't have Stipple Wild, what are you doing? You're just going on YouTube and watching random tutorials of software that you don't even have. Uh, why? Uh, all right. So I'm going to try to explain the rotation map the best I can, but I'm not having a good time trying to make this video. <laughs> all right. So in that image that I just had up, this used the rotation map, but we'll go through a couple of things. Let's see if we can pull up another one, to actually. Might as well. That uses the rotation map. Now this might catch your eye. You might want to make this at home. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to launch Stipple. Oh, still got Stipple open from last time, from the last lesson. All right, so... First off, let's just stick with, uh, actually, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load in. I'm going to load, actually, let's just hit go. Then when I'm here, in the effects channel. Okay, so in the effects channel, what I want to do is click it on. Oh, I didn't click it on. Oh, kittens. Uh, I'm going to go and grab the, just this gradient. Because gradients kind of make it easier to explain. I'm going to shut my draw image off altogether. And then for my min max dot size, I'll make them the same or as close as I can. So first off, let's get a dot shape that has some orientation to it. So I'm going to go to 3D and I will pick this uh all right i'm gonna pick this cube and now i'm gonna pick this cube because this cube we can tell the top the right and the left hand side so as it rotates it'll be easier easier to understand so for my variance i'm gonna pick put in 360 and let's just leave everything at default and see how it goes i'm gonna hit fill and it doesn't work it doesn't look that good uh, all right, I'm going to make my dots bigger, and then I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to go to my columns, and I'm going to put in something like 25 columns. Let's see how this goes. Uh, all right, cool. So, now these shapes rotated, and they rotated uh randomly right now right because i forgot to turn on rotate map so in the image shape or in the, in the image menu on the drop down click rotate map and what you'll see is if we hit go you'll see that these all rotate based on the gray value of this gradient right here of this gradient so now if I were to go here and rotate it sideways, and then I'm going to just run this one more time, and you'll see that from left to right, the, the shape is rotating increment or rotating gradually until it gets to the right-hand side. But now at the right-hand side, it's at the 360 position, or just about, actually. It looks like one, one line is cut off, but it's getting there. So now if I were to go to this and put it at 180, we'll get half a flip in between the left and the right. So whereas it starts out, let's put a little offset on this just so we can pull it away from the side a little bit. All right, so on the left-hand side, we see white is on the bottom. And then by the, by the time we get to the right-hand side, white is on the top now we can flip that around with this menu right here so if we go to the if we go to levels effects channel and we flip this uh and then we run it one more time we'll see that now on the right hand or on the left hand side white is on the top and then by the time we get to the right hand side let me put this on so i can point screen lock so on the left hand side we'll see that the white side is up and then as we go we see the uh we see that we see that cube rotate until on the right hand side in the 
opposite color the white is on the uh, is on the bottom so now if we were to go to this menu and we were to put in something like 720 we would see uh, two entire flips before as it goes through so now we have we have white on the top and then it flips and then by the time we get midway we have white on the top again and then as the time by the time we get all the way to the right we have white on the top as well so uh so now if we were to put it in the rotation if we were to put in say like 90 so now our start position is going to be with the cube rotated 90 degrees and we'll see white it, the the white part of the cube is on the right hand side and then by the time we get over here the white is on the right again so rotation if you put in a rotation that's basically the the object's start position at like its start orientation and then var which is variance is how much it's going to rotate throughout the design uh throughout the grayscale and now increment will constrain so so i'm going to go back to var and let's put in uh let's put in 360 or 360 not 390 uh 360 and then for increment we're going to put in 90. uh in my rotate position let's just put it back to zero just because it's easier to understand so now you'll see that this is very rigid white we have we have th this six sets uh, this six columns of cubes and they're all rotated with uh, with white on top and then white is on the right and then white is on the bottom and then white is on the left for each section of the columns. Now you'll see that it's it's not always perfect. This column uh, this section of columns looks like it has seven cubes. Whatever, uh, it just has to do with how you know where those dots are falling on the scale you can get it pretty perfect as you can see in that one image that i started out with and i'm i'm not going uh actually yeah i'll try to do this um this can be a little tricky because we have to get these dots really close to each other so let's put uh four on the on the dot shape we're going to put an increment of 60. now why 60. well a cube like this is basically a hexagon Hexagon has six sides. 360 divided by six is 60. So if we go and run this again, you'll see that these all these cubes could basically jut up, butt up against each other. Jut up, butt up? I don't know. So let me go to my columns and I'm gonna put in actually I'm gonna go to I'm gonna switch my column distribution to pix gap. Uh, I'm gonna switch my row distribution to pix gap. I'm going to switch, I'm going to just guess at what this is going to be, and I'm probably going to have to do it a couple times, but I'm going to say this should be something like 40, and then this one should be something like, uh, let's see, what is it, 20? And what we also want to do is make sure that our grid is on hex, and it looks like I was wrong, so I'm going to go with 20 and 40. Will that do? We're getting there. Uh, and if you don't know by now, I mean, when you're using this fill menu, it is a lot of trial and error. This is getting pretty close. Um, looks like this could be a little bit closer. And this could be a little further away. I mean, it would make sense if it was 25-25. All right, that's good enough. That's good enough. I can deal with that. Um, anyway, you see that all of these cubes butt up into each other. And let's see. What I want is that stipple logo. But sometimes it's tricky to get that stipple logo. Once you've already... Once you've replaced your stipple image, yeah, it's difficult to get that stipple logo back in to that channel so what i just did right there was turned on the background just so i could get that stipple logo uh don't mind me just just keep watching all right so now i have this stipple logo in here i'm going to turn that off and let's run it again 
See how it comes out. You see? Now this is getting kind of cool. Let's tweak this just a little bit. Uh, 23. Alright. So now we have this M.C. Escher-esque cube pattern. All these cubes all touch each other because they're all constrained to the 60 degree increments. Now if I were to go and put something like 90, you'll see that this all falls apart. I mean, it still looks kind of cool, but it doesn't do that uh, seamlessness that the other one did. Now, I could put in something like 120, because 60 times 2 is 120, uh, and these will all, again, match up into each other, but without as much variation as when I had it at 60. So, now this is a very specific, um, it's a very specific effect, right? I think it's pretty cool. However, I can't imagine that, you know, you're not going to be using this effect too much. However, that's what increment is for. Increment constrains things to a certain degree. Uh, so it can only make 120 degree or 60 degree or 90 degree turns. And it can't do that full on variation. Um, so again, variation itself is the entire spectrum mapped to the grayscale. And then we have rotation, which is the start position. So I'm going to turn increment off. Let's see how long I've been yammering on about this. 11 minutes. I'm going to keep going. All right. So I'm going to trash this image. Uh, I'm going to go to my drop down. I'm going to pick gradients. I'm going to pick uh, this one, this rainbow gradient. I'm going to go to my image menu. I'm going to pick uh, and go back. I'm going to pick that skull that I used in the rotation, uh, in the, in the depth dot one. So what I want to do now is I want my column distribution. We're going to put it at five. Uh, you might want to put it at one. It'll be smoother, but it'll take forever. And I don't, I don't want to screw this video up when I accidentally stall stipple out. Uh, so let's see, we also need to make the dot yeah, this is probably a good dot size. So now our variance, let's keep it at 360 for now. And let's hit fill and cross our fingers that we don't stall everything up. We break everything. All right, cool. We didn't. So now uh, let's get this a little closer together. And there we go. Okay, so now we can see it's taking four seconds to pop. That's that's fine. Okay, so now we got this skull, and what we ended up doing was we rotated that gradient dot, and basically as we rotated it, and as we placed them very close together with that with that distribute that pix gap column distribution of five, basically we put down a ra a rainbow dot, and then we put down another rainbow dot very close to it, and only what wasn't covered up is shown from the last dot so as it goes through and as we uh as we put these dots down we get what ends up looking quite a bit like uh what's it called a gradient map inside of photoshop so we can even make this kind of cooler so in this menu let's go and put 720 in in the in for variance and remember keep increment off you don't want to increment on right now um and hit go and this should take four seconds. Okay, so now you can see that there's even more rotation involved. So now we start to see even more uh, more detail on that skull. So now let's increase that again to 1440. And you'll notice like I use, I use 180, 360, 720, 1440, 2880. Like I generally am picking things that are divisible by 180 or divisible by 90. Or divisible by 360 <laughs> whatever um and the reason i do that is just it's more predictable to me it makes sense but you guys can just put in whatever numbers you want so now you see what happened now we get even more of a psychedelic effect and as we increase that that number so let's let's actually go to 2880 and do it again so as we increase that number we uh we get more rotations, we get more variations. We basically are, uh, 
every time you increase that, it's more sensitive to the difference in gray. So we end up with this pretty cool psychedelic effect. And we can mix this with by, by putting the draw image on if we wanted. Um, however, I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, the more images, the more image channels, source image channels you use, the slower it's going to go. And when you use a dot shape that's this big, depending on your device, it might take a while. Um, it might even take 30 seconds. And you might rather just quit than wait for it to finish. Um, I think that's it. And if it's not, um, I'm sure you're sick of listening to me talk. <laughs> so anyway, give this a shot. Um, I hope you understand all this. I mean, we can make it kind of easy. If I go to lines and I put in something like this, like one of these lines, and then I go uh, to my picks gap, I'm going to put in 15 by 15. Uh, my dot shape is white. Uh, let's see how this goes. Let's put this back at 360. Now, this is kind of the most basic way to use. Uh, the rotation map and you can see right here it's it's very uh very straightforward we basically rotate this line shape and then as we hit the gray it starts to rotate and then as the gray shifts it rotates more and then as it gets back to black it goes horizontal again so if we were to put in something like 180 uh and maybe make this dot size a little bit smaller and maybe increase or decrease this uh pix gap to something like 10 and 10 then hit go again you'll see that we get a pretty cool effect I mean this is pretty cool this is very uh, generative art style um, and I think that wraps it up so have fun with this one it is a really cool effect now keep in mind that if you're just using round dots if you're just using the regular circle dots uh, it's not going to do anything at all. In fact, in the code itself, if you're using circle dots, it bypasses the rotation altogether because rotation is just not going to do anything. So it doesn't spend its time on that. So uh, this really only works with the dot shapes. Um, all right, that about wraps it up.